This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Reminded me that he didn't even have a single toy until he was 12. After his dad died, he lived out of a suitcase and was shuffled around from various family members, eventually finding home with Uncle John and Aunt Florence somewhere in upstate New York. They were a truly sweet couple that loved nature and hiking, and they took good care of my dad. I have fond memories of family trips to visit them. Uncle John would teach us about plants, and Florence would read us Steinbeck. My dad would truly relax in their presence. But my dad's scars ran deep from those unstable, toyless, faintly detailed early years. Whatever he endured, it closed him off emotionally. My parents met on a blind date and were married young because my mom was pregnant with me at age 17. They settled in La Crescenta, which is like a suburb of a suburb in Los Angeles. It's as far north as you can get before hitting the Angeles National Forest. Four years after I was born, my mother gave birth to my sister Heather, and our cousin Terry moved in since he was at risk of being put into foster care. Terry was my dad's brother's kid. When my dad saw my uncle falling short as a father, he must have seen himself in Terry. Whatever the faults were in our family, my dad knew Terry was better off with us than lost in the system, and I'll always admire him for selflessly opening his home to the kid I would come to consider my brother. My mom worked at the library of our elementary school and later got a job as a school secretary. My dad did welding and plumbing jobs out of the garage and later opened up his own plumbing shop up the street from our house. My dad tried his best, but unfortunately his best included heavy drinking and regular doses of verbal and mental abuse. I was never beaten, aside from an occasional smack upside the head for insubordination, but I was also never hugged. I don't remember my dad hugging me even once when I was a kid. I never heard I love you, ever. And whatever I did, I didn't do right. God damn it, Eric, what the fuck is wrong with you? Today, my dad is a completely different person, but the dad I grew up with terrified me. All the kids in the neighborhood were scared of him, too. He was six foot four, 220 pounds, always angry and usually drunk. When he'd come home from work, I'd run into my closet and sit in the dark, listening to him storm through the house, bellowing, Eric, at the top of his lungs. I'd listen to the anger grow and grow until I had no choice but to come out, at which point he'd make me pull weeds or chop wood until he was satisfied. I was always twitching and jumpy because I never knew what to expect. Was I about to get yelled at, or would I get ignored? Being ignored sucked, but it was usually preferable. One day, he and his friends were having a few drinks in our garage, which was still his plumbing shop at the time. He called me in, and as soon as I entered... He grabbed me by the waistband of my underwear, hooked me to a crane that he used to pick up pipes, and zipped me into the air. I twisted like a piñata in front of his howling beer buddies, humiliated for his amusement. All I wanted was to be accepted, and all I got was belittled. Another time, he summoned me while he was drinking with his friends in our living room. Get in here. Tell me a dirty joke. No, I'm going to get in trouble. You're not going to get in trouble. It's fine. Just tell me a dirty joke. No, I don't want to. Finally, he convinced me, and I told him my best fourth-grade-level knee slapper. This lady has two dogs. One is named Titswiggle, the other one's named Seymour. One day, she's taking a shower, and the dogs get outside. So she runs outside naked, yelling, Seymour, Titswiggle, Seymour, Titswiggle. My dad's friends laughed. My dad didn't. With fire in his eyes, he grabbed me by the back of my neck, dragged me into the bathroom, and washed my mouth out with soap. Mom was always a peacemaker. She was an expert of shoveling things under the rug and pretended everything was okay, which was how she coped with her own father's alcoholism when she was growing up. She warned me when my dad was drunk or in a bad mood so I could make myself scarce. And whatever emotional support my dad didn't provide, my mom did her best to make up for it. My parents, of course, had their own problems. Laying in bed at night, I would hear them screaming at each other. My dad held our house hostage with his hostility, and it definitely took its toll on my mom. One afternoon when I was seven, my mom grabbed my sister, my cousin Terry, and me, and herded us into our family van. She was crying. What's the matter, Mom? Nothing. Everything's fine. Where are we going? I don't know. We're just going to go away. She drove and drove, crying and sobbing. I don't know what set her off. All I know is she must have felt so fucking trapped.
She never had her own life. She married my dad when she was 18, and here she was at 25, trying to raise three kids while taking...